Hey everybody, I hope this finds you well, healthy, uh, and all of your friends and relatives and people that you're close to are also staying healthy. Um, just, just sending out a message of wellness to everyone. Hope everybody's doing okay. I'm gonna jump right into a topic, and it's a huge one. I'm not gonna lie, I've started this video a couple of different times and found that I end up kind of circling back around and kind of running into a brick wall with it. So I'm just going to plow forward and just kind of, this is gonna be kind of an, an information dump video. Lots of stuff, a little caveat ahead of time, and then I'll try not to mention it again, is that you're gonna have slightly different terms for any different camera body, and I'm going to be talking specifically about the setup in my Sony camera bodies, but if you're shooting any other system, you may, after you've watched this video, and please do to, I think there's a lot of valuable information in here, but once it's finished, consider finding something that's specific to your camera body. Or perhaps even best, it'd be to go to your owner's manual and for your camera and actually delve into your focus system. And I just gave away the topic, which is focus. So I don't think it's possible to overstate how important understanding your focus system is. If you don't understand how to get your camera to focus perfectly on what you're shooting, you have a nightmare on your hands. You can have every single setting absolutely perfect. You can have the perfect exposure. You can have the most creative, lovely composition. You can be photographing the most beautiful subject. You can have amazing, stunning light. Every single thing can be absolutely amazing. And if that photo is out of focus, you got nothing. It really just kind of, I don't think there's anything to ruin a photo faster than messing up focus. So spending a good chunk of time to really dig into your focus system on your camera and to learn it and then tweak it and, ad and advance your skills with focus, it's all time very, very well spent. In preparing for this video, I actually dug into some videos that I watched way back when I first switched to Sony. And I have to give a shout out to Mark Gaylor. He is a Sony ambassador from, I believe, Australia. And he has the biggest wealth of information up available on his YouTube channel and on his website. There are free eBooks that you can download, um, in many cases on specific camera bodies. He'll go right through button by button, great stuff. It's all free. And then he has uh, spots on his website and in his books where you can click to do a PayPal donation. Please support him. His, uh, we want him in the photography community churning out this stuff because there is there is nothing better than, than his stuff in terms of learning what's going on. So I am going to refer everybody over to his videos for very specific setting information. I'm not gonna talk about setting up custom buttons, but every single thing that I have chosen in terms of a custom setting on my cameras has come from his information. So I will actually embed or and underneath, I'll, I'll give you links to, uh, a couple of things that I think are incredibly valuable in terms of setting up some custom buttons for focus. So the first thing we're gonna jump into is just a quick discussion of the focus modes. And then after that, we're gonna go over and talk about focus area. You don't wanna confuse the two. The focus modes are in, in the Sony system, generally four different modes that you can set your camera up to, to focus in. The first two, AFC and AFS, uh, are two different autofocuses. The AFC stands for continuous. That's a tracking system. That's going to follow an object and it's going to predict where it will be a millisecond into the future so that when you push the shutter button, the focus is predictive into where that thing will be and it'll nail focus on a moving subject. Huge thing to have uh, in your tool belt. If you're photographing pets running around, kids in the yard, any kind of sports with movement, um, all of that is going to be shot with AFC. AFS is for a static subject or a stationary object. And so if you're going to be photographing a person literally seated for a portrait or still life or macro or something where the subject is not in motion, then you wanna switch over to AFS. Then there are two manual modes. MF is just manual focus and, and you're using the focus ring on your lens to focus in. But then DMF is direct manual focus. And I absolutely love this mode. I think, remembering back, I, I switched to Sony a little over a year ago. 
I would say that probably the single most exciting thing that I found when I first got switched over was DMF because the way that, and I set it up exactly off of a video from, from Mark Gaylor. So basically the way I have my camera set up is I use back button focus. Um, topic I haven't discussed on these videos. I will, I will address it in more detail, perhaps uh, on another video. But when you get your camera from the factory, generally your focus engages when you half press your shutter button and it will do a light meter reading and focus your lens. The problem that I have found is I don't always want to focus when I do a light meter reading. So I have programmed this button, my AF on button in the back to be my focus. So for autofocus, if I wanted to focus, I hit this thumb button and it locks focus. Then I can slide my thumb over here and hit the one on the right, which is the AEL button. My AEL button overrides, it goes into a custom shooting setup. You can program several different ones into to a Sony camera body. And I have it set to override my focus system, to go into DMF, direct manual focus, and to set up so that as soon as I touch my focusing ring on my lens, it magnifies what I'm aimed at by the big magnification. And then it turns on focus peaking assist. So basically what happens, I put my camera on a subject and I hit the, the AEL button. And immediately, as soon as I touch this, it zooms in really, really, really tight. And then I can just micro adjust my focus ring and really focus in on whatever it is that I'm focusing. The thing that makes me realize how valuable this is, is when I have done an autofocus on something, a regular autofocus, and then when I push my DMF and do that magnification, I actually realize it isn't exactly focused on what I want it to be focused on. And just usually I'm very close because I've already autofocused ahead of time. And then I, but these subtle adjustments are where I attain my really, really sharp focus. And so, it's a huge one-two punch in terms of attaining focus. And, and I highly recommend that setup. And, and I will, like I said, put links into Mark Gaylor's, you know, button by button, menu item by menu item explanation of how to set that up. All right, let's go over to the other thing that we wanna talk about, which is your focus area. Actually, between these two, let me back up a step and say that you, you need to be able to find all of these things very quickly especially if you're going to be out in the world photographing things that are constantly changing. If you're shooting still life in a studio and your, your settings can, you can spend a half hour getting every setting ready to go and then take your picture, then the speed of working isn't really as essential. But when you're out in the world and that moment is fleeting and going by, you need to find it quickly. So on my A9, my focus modes are actually a physical dial here that you dial back and forth and you find it by hand. But on my A7R4, the dial isn't even there. You have to have it located somewhere either on a custom button or in your function menu. For me, I use the function menu. I, I, I find it a very quick and easy button to find. When you push the function button, it brings up a row of 12 things that you can program in to access very, very quickly. I have one right above the other, focus mode and focus area. So I can hit one and then I can just use my switch to move down to the one right below it and, and select the other. So I can reach focus very, very fast. Oh, sorry, that was a slight rabbit hole, but I should have mentioned it earlier. And, and so where, wherever your buttons are or your menu items or whatever you need to, you wanna learn how to get there real fast. All right, over to focus area. So focus area is basically going to govern what portion of your focus points inside your camera are going to engage. So wide would engage all of them. And so in, in the case of the A9, that's a, a 693 focus points. They all engage and then the processor inside the camera is going to determine what it thinks the subject is and it's gonna focus on it. And they use, um, a, a, I mean, it's a complex algorithm in there as far as what's going on inside the camera, but one of the big factors is 
the, the closeness to the lens. It's going to assume that you're trying to focus on the thing closest to the lens when you're in wide mode. Um, and if that's the case, if you're focusing on a football game or a soccer game, and you want to always focus on the player that's closest to your lens, that works great. The problem happens when you're trying to focus on something that is further back in the image. So you have a referee, and that's, that's a favorite one when you're doing a football game, and there's a ref standing there, and you want the pictures of the players, and, and it locks on the ref. You, you don't want that, you want the players. So you have to get to a, a, an area or a, a zone in your focusing to where you can set it and not necessarily rely on the closest object. And that's when you go into a zone uh, focus area. And the zone focus area in pretty much any camera is going to move around. You can pick which area of your screen is going to focus and you can work around objects that are closer to you that you don't want to focus on. Then beyond that, you can shrink down to an even smaller uh, either a spot or an expanded spot, which will be just like maybe one pixel or maybe a little group of nine and, and focus on much, much smaller areas. So each one of those focus areas is going to give you more fine tuning on focus, but there's also a little bit more lag in terms of you need to put the, the, the pixel right where you want it. And, and so it's gonna be situational and you wanna figure out for you what works the best. One of the nice things on, on a lot of the menus is there's a lot of customizability. So you can actually remove some of the focus areas so that you, instead of having all of these different options, you can just have your three favorites come up or your or, or whatever ones that you really like using, which I really, um, I've done that. I've removed some of the stuff that I don't use so much. Another mode that, or another area, sorry, that works very, very well is to have autofocus lock. And when you're, again, let's go back to the sports analogy. If, if you're using autofocus lock, you're basically identifying a, a subject and saying, that is my subject. And if that person weaves in front of somebody else or then goes behind somebody else and moves all around, it's going to stay focused on them. And you can go in and adjust essentially how sticky that lock on is gonna be. You can, uh, I think both with Canon and Sony, it's basically like a five, five level adjustment. On level one, it doesn't stay stuck on that subject very long. It will stay for a little bit and then pretty soon it'll just jump up to something closer in front and, and move on to a new subject. But by the time you go to number five, it's going to remain very, very sticky on that subject and it will stay on that while, it, while they move behind an obstruction and then when they come out the other side of the obstruction, they're still in focus. I personally like to use that very sticky setting. I usually go all the way to either four or five in terms of level of stickiness, uh, just for, for the stuff that I shoot and basically how I want it to, to function. Another very important thing to talk about is that on the Sony cameras, you have face priority, where it's actually going to seek out human faces and that's awesome if you want to focus on human faces. But let's use the example of maybe a NASCAR race. You're shooting at a race and you wanna actually focus on the cars. If you have face priority turned on, it's going to actually seek out faces and focus on them when you don't want it to. So another real strong suggestion is in that function menu, have the ability to turn face priority on and off. And the same thing with eye autofocus. So eye autofocus is the same deal, only even more specific. It's going to try to find an eye and focus on it. And if your goal is to have a very sharp photo of a horse, then, and it's set on a human eye, um, it, you're, you're, you're fighting against your built-in computer system in the camera. Now there is an animal eye AF in many of the Sony camera bodies. So you'll wanna be able to toggle back and forth between those. Uh, if you shoot a lot of pets or animals, you might even want to make that animal IF, uh, IAF your, your main priority setting. I have IAF programmed to my button on the sides of my lenses. I use 
G Master lenses and almost all of my lenses have these buttons on them. Now, all of these buttons, I have three on this particular lens. They all do the same thing. So if I go to portrait orientation, I can hit this button right here. If I go back to landscape, I can hit this button here. You can always just grab one. And, and for me, it's been, my, my preference is to have it actually lock an IAF um, and I think I really like that most because I shoot a lot of weddings. And, and for me, it's just nice to just hit the thumb and have an eye go on, on in focus and take my shot. So yeah, I think that's basically the nuts and bolts of it. Um, it's impossible from a video to get everything that you would need in order to be good at focus. It, it's like everything else takes practice and it's going to take a decent amount of it. Um, the... The one thing that I didn't mention that, um, that is another thing that you're going to want to work on is finding the ability to shoot through a very, very cluttered field of things to focus on something further back. And the thing that I'm thinking of as an example is actually uh, a bird that's sitting in a bunch of trees and you have all the branches all over the place and you don't want to focus on you know, this ton of branches. You want to get through there and focus on a bird, which is further back. And for that, I use spot and, and a, like a single pixel. And you, you want to get that pixel right over top of the bird and then engage your autofocus and, and it will focus right on that bird. And the way that I do that an awful lot of the time is I will hit my main spot autofocus and, and hit my main back button focus to get that. And then once I've gotten there, I switch over to my uh, DMF which is my other focus button, and just do a real quick little minute adjustment to make sure that it's exactly where I want it. And I try to get the eyeball of, of the subject and the face to be in focus and take my shot. So, all right, I think that's basically it. I know that it's a huge topic and I'm sure that the, no matter how well I have done here, you will still have questions and that is good. That's a great thing. Um, so go ahead and dig into your, uh, into your manual or into some other videos and then get your camera and go out and practice focusing on things. Kids seem to always be willing to oblige as do pets for running around and letting you practice your tracking. So that would probably be a great thing to get started. And same thing with birds. They will always help you tracking. Even if you're not a birder, getting out there and trying to catch birds in flight is a, a real test of focus skill. And, and I highly recommend using that also as some training. So yeah, let me know how it goes for you. Please do subscribe and share this out if you found it helpful. And I would very much appreciate any, uh, any subjects that you would like to have me cover in the future. And I will be happy to dig in. Thank you very much and have a great day.